saw that we were able to uh, do clock and data recovery when we do not have a forwarded clock using a VCO by using the same phase detector. The control voltage of the VCO has to be <laughs> has to consist of two components one that is proportional to the phase detector output and one that is the integral of the phase detector output. The way the integral helps you is that it will move the phase and make sure that it aligns with the uh, center of the data uh, symbol okay? uh, or another way to think about it is that the output of the integral path is the offset to the VCO which brings its frequency to the right frequency and then uh, any momentary corrections that is required that are required are made by the proportional path. Okay. This is the phase detector and for now we can assume the linear phase detector. V control, this is VR, this is VC <laughs> and this has a gain of KVC. Okay. Now, we have this topology, but uh, we still do not know how to choose the values of R and C and so on and also how let us say you have a jitter in the input clock, uh, what happens to the uh, jitter in the input data, what happens to the clock and so on. Okay. So, to evaluate this we construct a phase domain model and for the charge pump itself we will model the average behavior of ICP. Okay. We know that ICP consists of uh, pulses, but we will look at the average for now. Okay. It is when you consider the average behavior that you get a charge pump gain of uh, ICP by 2 pi. right? Now, uh, let us assume uh, that d in is data at a certain rate and at that and the whole thing is locked. Okay. Locked and at that point this clock is some cos 2 pi f 1 t plus some phi 1 some phase offset it is locked to that. Okay. This is the operating point let us say you have a you have an alternating uh, bit pattern as the input then you have uh, this has reached steady state and this is the output of the VCO. Okay. And we know that at this point if uh, data is like this the clock would be like that. Okay. So, this is the operating point of the system meaning it has locked to this and we will look at increments beyond this. Okay. So, what is the stuff that we, we may want to look at? We may want to see what happens if d in has jitter. Okay. That means, that the edges of d in move back and forth. Okay, uh, that is one thing. So, uh, and then we may want to figure out uh, how much noise. I mean, how much does the noise of R contribute to jitter? How much does the noise of the VCO contribute to jitter, and so on? Okay. So, to do this, we construct the phase model. Okay. So, what uh, to keep things simple? I will take this as the operating point and then let us say you have any changes in the input phase. right? So, I will call this now the 0 phase. Okay. This is uh, at 0 phase now okay. and this in fact this offset also I will make 0 there is no point having some general offset. Okay. Now, I will assume that 
there is some phase increment okay this can be anything this can be time varying this can be constant okay like for instance like i showed yesterday if from this point onwards all the edges move to the left that is like a step phi right and uh, uh, let me call it phi in as a result there will be some phi out we have to figure out how much that is okay and also in uh, steady state the average of this what will be the average of icp i mean before we applied this uh, phase increment what's the average of icp the charge from current huh? when uh, uh, dn is uh, let's say alternating bit stream and then this is locked to uh, the middle of the data symbols what is the average of icp it is zero right so here the operating point is zero and then because i applied some phase increment here there could be some uh, increment in fact let me call that as icp okay this is the incremental uh, average output of the phase detector beyond uh, beyond its operating point okay so what we want to do is to construct the phase model of this okay so we have the phase detector here so how is the average output of icp related to phi in and phi out what is the characteristic of the phase detector we earlier we plotted it right uh, let's assume the usual the same linear phase detector that we assumed then so the phase detector input signals the two input signals the data input signal has a phase phi in and uh, uh, this uh, uh, output phase output uh, signal has a phase phi out okay so what is icp yeah icp by 2 pi times delta phi okay what is delta phi phi in minus phi out yeah because if uh, data leads the clock then you will get more up signals and the average will become positive so, the phase detector and charge pump together can be modeled as phi in minus phi out. It responds to this difference and it has a gain of ICP by 2 pi. Okay. The output of this is the average ICP. we have the loop filter this is called the loop filter by the way we have a feedback loop and we have some r and c there that's called the loop filter so what is the characteristic of that how is uh, vctl related to icp Yeah. So, in the time domain it would be I will just show the two paths. So, one path is just a gain of r okay. and the other path is an operator which is an integral right and these two are summed together to give this. I mean this may look overly complicated for a series r c, but series r c may not be the only way we implement it. So, this is this shows you the uh, proportional and the integral paths separately. Okay. And then finally, we have the VCO whose input is V control and output phase is phi out. Okay. So, what is the relationship imposed by the VCO? So, this uh, again we know right. So, the relationship uh, imposed by the VCO or the characteristic of the VCO this is V control okay. and we have 2 pi k VCO integral dt okay. and the output of this is phi out 
and that is fed back here. So, you can see the negative feedback loop with a proportional path and an integral path. Okay. This whole thing is the phase detector plus charge pump and this whole thing is the loop filter and this is the V C O. Okay. Is it okay? Now, this is the model of course, to analyze this we typically use the frequency domain and the transfer functions in the Laplace domain to analyze this and that of course, is exactly the same. So, every except every quantity is now in the Laplace domain. So, we have phi in as well s minus phi out of s the gain remains exactly the same x e p by 2 pi then it goes through two paths a proportional path of r and an integral path which is just 1 by sc so the whole thing is basically r plus 1 by sc right and this is now v control of s and we have 2 pi k V C O by s. Okay. So, for this please evaluate phi out of s by phi in of s the transfer function. Okay. You must have seen this block diagram in control systems. What is y by u in this case? The standard uh, g by 1 plus g h. In fact, the picture we have looks uh, the same with h equals 1 and g being <coughs> the product of this whole thing, which is i c p by 2 pi and r plus 1 by s c 2 pi k v c o by s okay. and this goes away. So, we have i c p times 1 plus s c r times k v c o by s square c. Okay. So, in our case we have g by 1 plus g or 1 over 1 plus 1 by g it is the same thing right. So, we have 1 by 1 plus the reciprocal of this which is s square c divided by i c p 1 plus s c r k v c o uh, which can be written as When you normalize things, you should do it uh, uh, nicely so that it's easier to identify terms. Okay. Mm. Let's see what's a good way to do this. So I'll take one plus S C R to the top. And remove it from here. This is probably a good enough thing to do.
Okay, we can express this in many ways, but this is one of the ways. <laughs> now let's think about the transfer function for a while. Uh, what is the DC gain of this transfer function? One. What does it mean? I mean, this is now a phase domain model. What's the meaning of DC gain here? Huh? What DC voltage? The input is a phase here in this model. Now, this is a model of the clock and data recovery circuit. Okay. Finally, we have to the point of the model is to analyze this. So, tell me what is the meaning of DC gain being 1 in the phase model as far as the CDR is concerned? Huh? Final? Phi n equals phi out. Okay. So, what does that mean? In terms of these signals, D in and clock. If you get a continuous stream of 1 or 0, this uh, whole circuit will not work at all, right. Hmm. Exactly. So, what happens is, what it means is the following. So, let us say you we initially assumed that it was operating in steady state right that was our operating point. And the clock would be like this ok. Now, what is uh, how do you one of the ways of uh, thinking of DC gain is if you apply a step input the steady state value is the same as the input value right that is DC gain. If you apply a step the final value of the step response is the DC gain is not it. So, now we apply a phase step which means that let us say from this point onwards all the input cycles move to the left ok. So, what happens to the clock immediately nothing may happen or maybe it will may move a little and in fact, in uh, if you choose the parameters incorrectly it could be that it moves even in the opposite direction after a while, but eventually the uh, CDR will align to the newly shifted pattern ok. This we would have expected anyway that is the new steady state of this, but that is the meaning of the phase model. <laughs> I mean we make all these models I mean models are abstract you have to be able to figure out what they say about the real system. Okay. So, that is what this means right. So, if you pull all the edges to the left eventually all the clock edges will also move to the left that way in in a way that they will get aligned to this. Similarly, if you move to the right ok. This phase is a, I mean, can be a difficult quantity to handle. We are thinking of it as a continuous variable, but actually it is sampled in that we can measure phase only at the edges. But when we are, uh, when everything is moving slowly, what we are doing is okay. So we will not go further than that because otherwise it becomes too uh, complicated. Okay, because you can't measure the phase uh, at all values of time. Okay, I mean you have information about the phase only when there is a zero crossing, right? So, fine at least we know that uh, this is a good to know that uh, hey if all the bits get shifted by some amount then the clock also will eventually get shifted, but how long will it take any idea? I mean does the transfer function tell you anything about it? How long will that take? Huh? Yeah, so what aspect of the transfer function do you have to evaluate to figure out how long it takes? Huh? Yeah, okay. Just look at the transfer function and tell me something about. Uh, so, what is the order of the transfer function? Second order, okay. I do not try to calculate it. this is second order, but also a second order with a 0, okay. 
So, it can be a little uh, uh, tricky to calculate the settling time exactly, but if you are given a transfer function and ask uh, I mean you are asked like how fast does it respond to something, what aspect of the transfer function would you look for? The transfer function is in the frequency domain right, huh? Huh? Ah, you have to look at the natural frequency at least that tells you how fast it starts to respond ok. Actually this will uh, because it has a 0, it will have a uh, I mean uh, you not because it has a 0, you will have to eventually look uh, position the 0 such that uh, the settling time is much longer than what is implied by omega n, but that is a measure of uh, how fast it is right, how fast the system is. So, you have a second order denominator and the second order denominator I mean usually is characterized by the uh, natural frequency and the damping factor. So, what is the natural frequency of this and what is the damping factor? or quality factor. By the way, I mean if you normalize things like this, this uh, omega n is the natural frequency and zeta is the damping factor or if you normalize it as this is also fine, then q is the quality factor ok. And q of course, equals 1 by 2 zeta. So, what are the natural frequency and the damping factor? So, the natural frequency omega n is how much? Ok, and the damping factor or the quality factor? Huh? ICP? Uh. like this. Like this? Okay. This is correct. I mean this does not sound uh, Quality factor is how much? Oh, yeah, maybe it is correct. Yeah, okay. yeah. I am more comfortable with the quality factor. So, it is something like this. I mean uh, right now it does not make uh, too much sense, uh, but we will uh, we will look at this in more detail ok, but it tells you at least some measure of uh, how fast things are. What is the damping factor that you might use? What value of damping factor would you want? What does the damping factor say? What does it say? How fast it settles? Yeah, how whether there is overshoot or not, 
and how sluggish it is and so on. Okay, so what value of the tamping factor would you choose? You just pick a number. Huh? Less than one. Okay. So let's see what we should choose. So one thing we have to keep in mind here is that uh, we have also a zero at one by CR. When I say one by CR, the actually zero is at uh, minus one by CR. It's in the left half plane, but it's very common to talk like this. So this is a left half plane zero at one by CR. Okay. Now when we have these square roots and so on, it is hard to interpret things. And then turns out this is the most ideal uh, realization of the system. And a very obvious uh, non-ideal feature is that if I have, I'll always have some parasitic here, right? The VCO is there and so on. So that becomes a third order system, and then it becomes quite uh, annoying to analyze like this in closed form with the poles and zeros. So typically, what do you do? How do you analyze negative feedback uh, systems? What is the quantity that you normally use in negative feedback systems? Loop gain. So we go and analyze the loop gain. That makes things slightly easier. So in this particular case, <coughs> please evaluate the loop gain and plot the uh, body magnitude and phase. Okay. So the loop gain is quite simple. It's a product of everything that's in the signal path, which is ICP. R plus 1 by SC, ICP by 2 pi cancels with 2 pi KVCO, the 2 pi part, KVCO by S. Okay. You can also write this as uh, ICP R KVCO by S plus ICP KVCO by S square C. Okay. It is the same thing. So, when you plot the magnitude, We can uh, plot it as a sum, uh, this part alone or rather anyway you have already plotted it. What does it look like? What is the slope at very low frequencies? Minus 40 dB per decade because this term is what dominates. So, it starts with uh, minus 40 dB per decade and at what is the break point? Yeah, 1 by R c. Yeah. And after that, what is the slope? Minus 20 dB per decade. Okay. In fact, if I consider this the 0 dB line, all of you have in plotted it like this. Okay. Although, I mean, depending on the values, it could even be like that, right? That is fine. Which one would you, do you want it to be? Why? Why is that? Why do you want it to be the first one? Because we wrote it first already and you do not want to change it. Ah, stability. Basically, the I think you know the stability criteria. So, at this point, also if I draw the phase, it is even more uh, clear. What is the phase at very low frequencies? Minus 180. And at very high frequencies? Minus 90. Okay. And here it goes to minus 135. Okay. So, if it is like this, the phase would be close to minus 90, minus 180 when it crosses unity. So, it will be unstable or anyway you know that you should know that uh, when a negative feedback system for it to be uh, stable, the when it crosses unity, when the loop gain crosses unity, it should have a nearly minus 20 dB per decade slope. Right? It should behave like a first order system. Okay. That is when it will be stable. So, this is the way to choose stuff that is this 1 by R c should happen before the unity loop gain frequency. Okay. This is omega u loop. We already assumed that 1 by R c is less than the unity loop gain frequency. What is the unity loop gain frequency approximately? How do you get that? Uh, yeah, yeah, I mean can you do that actually? Can you take the modulus of this and equate it to 1 and solve for omega? Or would you want to use some approximation? Huh? I mean, which is this? Uh, like, I have two terms here, one and two. So, 
where is one relevant where is two relevant or where is one significant and where is two significant yeah so this is basically a plot of one right if i plot one and two separately they would be like this okay this would be one and that would be two and this bode magnitude plot is a log plot so if you want to add two terms what do you do in a log plot log log plot if you want to add two curves if you want to plot the sum of two curves what is the thing to do huh? no whichever is higher you take it okay if you want to multiply you add the two plots if you want to add you just take the higher one it will be inaccurate around here right it should be like that but uh, that is okay so basically i am adding 1 and 2 and the result is simply that okay so to calculate this omega u loop if i uh, take this and equate it to 1 it becomes very complicated but i can get it only from the expression for 1 so what is that this is under the assumption that 1 by rc is indeed smaller than omega u loop okay this is not a general expression <laughs> so what's the value of the unity loop gain frequency icpr icp r k vco okay only thing is i mean keep in mind that this omega u loop is in radians per second and this uses the value of k vco in hertz per volt okay that's how it is I mean, some two pi's get cancelled, and this is what happens. If you want the unity loop gain frequency in hertz, you have to further divide this by two pi. Okay. So, what is the relevance of this uh, omega u loop? I mean, unity loop gain frequency. That is, it is the frequency at which loop gains becomes unity. So, what's the significance of that for the negative feedback loop? Well, we wanted to just find one more thing, and we found it. Isn't? No, you calculate the phase margin there, but uh, what is the significance of the unity loop gain frequency? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Again, if I draw the classical control systems plot y by u is g by 1 plus g h this can be expressed in many different ways is 1 by h times g h by 1 plus g h and so on ok. Now, there is some pre multiplier here, but this part uh, g h by 1 plus g h that appears in the transfer function of every negative feedback system. What is that? That is basically loop gain divided by 1 plus loop gain okay? or another way to write it is this part alone is 1 by 1 plus 1 over g h which is to say 1 by 1 plus 1 divided by loop gain. Okay? Now, what is the purpose of the negative feedback loop or what do you want the loop gain to be in the negative feedback loop? Very large. Okay, that is the idea. In fact, ideally you would like it to be infinite. If you have infinite loop gain, this extra factor g h by 1 plus g h that becomes 1. Okay, so, that is when it behaves like an ideal negative feedback system. Okay, when you make let us say an op amp amplifier, let us say an inverting amplifier, you have R 1, R 2 and this right and what is the transfer function? minus r 2 by r 1. This will be minus r 2 by r 1 only if the loop gain is very large. Okay. Otherwise, you will get an additional factor or rather you always have this additional factor loop gain by 1 plus loop gain. Uh, only thing is that factor itself will be very close to 1 if the loop gain magnitude is very large. It does not matter what its phase is. Okay. There is loop gain could be a complex number. right? It does not matter whether it is 1000 or j 10000. Okay. So, they uh, in both cases this loop gain by 1 plus loop gain will be very close to 1 and it behaves like an ideal negative feedback system. Okay. So, and what happens uh, when loop gain is very small? I mean you look at this uh, system and tell me what happens when the loop gain is very small, what is the gain? 
this system. So, this one right y by u is this number and this is approximately 1 by h if mod g h is much more than 1. Okay. So, that is uh, the transfer function between y and u depends only on the feedback path, it does not depend on the forward path that is one of the properties of the negative feedback system. Okay. And if the loop gain is very small what happens? It is approximately equal to g. So, it is an open loop system right. It is not enough in feedback to have a wire coming back from the input output to the input. It should have some significant amount of signal that is it should have loop gain. Otherwise, if g h is very small what is the point of bringing it back? I mean it is just like having g from u to y. Okay, This is like an open loop system. So, now this uh, unity loop gain frequency omega u loop that is the frequency which divides uh, the whole frequency axis into region where loop gain is very high and we re region where loop gain is very low. Of course, it is not an abrupt transition, it is not as though below omega u loop, loop gain is infinity and beyond it, it is 0, it is not like that, it is a smooth transition, but that is where loop gain crosses 1 and we can say that that is the transition point, okay. that is the transition between the <laughs> feedback system behaving ideally and then behaving like an open loop system. Of course, you have to keep in mind that the transition is smooth. Okay. So, that is why based on the loop gain you can approximately uh, figure out the closed loop transfer function. Okay. So, if the loop gain is like this right, we have the loop gain plotted here. If you plot L by 1 plus L, what will the magnitude plot look like? The loop gain plot is given, the plot of L is given, the magnitude plot of L. I want the plot of L by 1 plus L what will that be based on what we just discussed now? What is that going to be? Very high frequency. Uh, hmm. Okay, do not worry about the details, I just want some sort of Bode segment approximation. Uh, what is that? I mean, I, I want a plot of L by 1 plus L, forget the what is it? Okay. After that, decrease how? It will follow L, that is all, right. So, this number when L is very large, it is equal to 1, when L is very small, it is equal to L. So, from this, you can plot the closed loop transfer function also, it will look like that. Right? So, basically, the closed loop bandwidth is the unity loop gain frequency okay because what is bandwidth after all the bandwidth is where you is the frequency which separates uh, ideal behavior from non ideal behavior roughly speaking okay and that is the equal to the unity loop gain frequency because in a negative feedback loop below the unity loop gain frequency you have very high loop gain and above it you have uh, low loop gain okay so this is the plot of just l by 1 plus l the exact transfer function depends on where you feed the input and where you take the output, right? That will, uh, you know that uh, in this particular case, if I uh, feed the input here and take the output there, then it is g by 1 plus g h. Now, if I feed the input here, it will be 1 by 1 plus g h and so on, okay? So, this factor will be common, but this extra stuff will depend on where you apply the input and where you take the output, okay? So, for that you will have to multiply this L by 1 plus L with something else and then get the closed loop transfer function. Okay. So, roughly speaking our closed loop transfer function is a low pass transfer function. In our case, in our case H is 1 right. In our model we have this is a, this is L and uh, this feedback is just 1. Okay. In our case the closed loop transfer function is in fact L by 1 plus L. Okay. So, very crudely the transfer function looks like this, it is a low pass transfer function with a bandwidth equal to omega u loop. Okay. So, what does this mean now? We have phi out by phi in, in the phase model it is a low pass transfer function with a bandwidth of omega u loop with a bandwidth of whatever I C P R times k v c o radians per second. So, again this is the phase model, what does it say about d in and clock and all this stuff? Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. 
So, you can also have the jitter itself can have frequency right like the successive edges can move slowly and then move back this way. If you have a sinusoidal jitter what it means is what is a sinusoid? It is hard to draw uh, these things you can uh, plot them in MATLAB. So, let us say I have a sinusoidal jitter what does this mean actually ideally maybe the edges were all periodic right. So, if I have a sinusoidal phase what it means is the edges here are uh, skewed to the left and here maybe a little bit more and here it is not skewed at all and here it is skewed to the right ok and the whole thing repeats that is basically a data pattern with sinusoidal jitter you will have this way and that way movement alternating movement and that can be fast or slow ok. In fact, every alternate edge could be this way and that way and so on that is like really high frequency jitter the frequency of that is f s by 2 right. So, what it says here is that if you move the edges around uh, slowly up to the bandwidth up to omega u loop it will follow it the clock will actually follow the data, but beyond that uh, it will just average it out it will just give you the average position that is all. If you keep on moving the data edges back and forth very rapidly then the clock edges will not move at all that is what it means ok which makes sense I mean because it takes uh, some time for the voltage to build up and phase of the VCO to change ok. Now, do you want the clock edges to move or not move? If the data edges move do you want the clock edges to move or do you want them to not move at all to move from the point of view of recovering the data it is good to move ok, but if you want to use the clock elsewhere it is good to not move right you understand I mean both uh, come into play. So, you would ideally like the uh, clock to move along with the data. So, that every data bit is clocked right in the middle of the data symbol ok, but at the same time if the output clock is jittering around and you want to use that for further transmission that is a bad thing because you will be transmitting jittery data ok. So, we will see all those things come into play and there are some uh, parameters that uh, describe these or some characterize these we will uh, discuss them. Uh, some specifications of uh, clock and data recovery circuits. And finally, this type of stuff I said it looks like a simple low pass filter this is too simplistic there is some uh, detail here that also we will look at ok. Please think about these things we will continue the discussion tomorrow.